main thing I'd like to note is that enhanced interrogation should be the exception, not the rule. Um, like uh, we heard, 90% uh, of the time, traditional techniques work. And when they work, it's great. But the fact is, 10% of the time, it doesn't work. And when that happens, we miss out on important information. And because of it, our soldiers are getting killed. Uh, there are more like there are uh, plots uh, from terrorists that could have been foiled that won't be, and 10% is just not an acceptable number. We can reduce this by using enhanced interrogation techniques. Um, now we can see that uh, most people in the United States uh, don't think that these techniques should never be used. Only 29% of people uh, polled in a 2007 Pew Research Center poll said that uh, even they said torture should never be used. Uh, however, uh, as we've been advocating, these techniques aren't even on that level. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, the negative side said themselves that 25% of information on Al-Qaeda came from these three cases in which we use uh, waterboarding on their top operatives. If 25% of the total information we use came from those three sources, then it's obviously a very effective technique. Uh, and without that 25% of our information, uh, can you imagine uh, how much less prepared we would be to fight over uh, in the war on terror? Um, <coughs> Next, uh, our opposition stated that us using these techniques might uh, play with the uh, terrorists uh, wanting to attack us more. First of all, they wouldn't be terrorists if they weren't already trying to attack us. And second, um, we see that they um, <coughs> actually feel uh, differently towards us when we don't use these techniques. They see that we're weak. Uh, in a Washington Post article, um, <coughs> Abu Zubaydah was described as ideologically zealous, defiant, and uncooperative until the day in midsummer when his captors strapped him to a board, wrecked his nose and mouth in cellophane, and forced water into his throat as a technique that simulates drowning. This particular session lasted 35 seconds before Abu Zubay broke down and he told his captors whatever they wanted to hear the following day from there on out. They didn't have to do anything more. He was just an open source of information. Uh, <clears throat> a former CIA uh, employee who was there said it was like flipping a switch. They did it and he would talk. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, before uh, we were forceful in that way, they were pretty much laughing at us. That all you got. And you know what, we have to show that we are a powerful nation and that they can, you know, play one over on us, that we will do what it takes to stop them. Um, like I said, this is about the exception to the rule. Um, 9% of the time, we don't need it. The fact is, there's a time when it does, it will save lives. Um, <clears throat> Mark Beeson, um, in an article from USA Today, says that it's the best. If it were not for these techniques, there would be craters in Los Angeles, London, and Karachi to make the one, to match the one in downtown New York. Uh, these techniques have given us information that have foiled terrorist plots in the past, um, and there's no reason to believe that they don't have the ability to do the same in the future when the necessary situation arises. Thank you.